What's going on, believers? I have another weekly market review and outlook for you today. Please take a quick second. Rio with a risk disclaimer here. Getting into the economic calendar just to go over what hit the market last week and what's coming this week. So there was a holiday, Memorial Day on Monday, shortened trading day, so made it a shortened trading week. Tuesday, inflation-related news, high impact. Wednesday, job-related news, high impact. FOMC members speaking. Thursday, employment, high impact. Inflation-related, high impact. FOMC members speaking. And then non-farm payroll, high impact on Friday. Coming into this week, Monday, inflation-related on the producer side, high impact. Tuesday, no higher median impact, as well as Wednesday. Thursday, unemployment claims, high impact. And then Friday, no medium or high impact. So getting to the charts. I want to start off on a monthly just because it's a new month. June started Thursday officially last week as far as the daily candles here. And so for the dollar, I'm going to just state my own personal opinion because the monthly chart, again, I don't trade the monthly chart, but I do use it to aid in my analysis. I anticipate a bullish month for a dollar. Draw on liquidity is going to be this monthly sell side and balance, buy side and efficiency. But short term, the high of May. And then you mean the S&P monthly. So it's traded into the midpoint of this week here. If it shows any signs of continuation. The high from August 2022. NASDAQ. It's already taken out the high for May. Any continuation to the upside. Looking at this monthly rejection block here. From March 2022. Dow Jones. Opening price of May. And then the high. Gold. She looking for May's low. UJ. May's high, as well as the high end of this monthly sell side and balance buy side and efficiency. GU. May's low. April's low. So those are like the monthly levels that I'm looking at on the different assets that I track weekly. So of course this weekly high. If there's any sort of retracement, I'll be looking for this inefficiency here. It's right on the fifty percent of the range from this low to this high. So the current price leg on the weekly. So any retracement lower be watching this area closely. But to the upside, previous week's high, and then this week's high, 105.103. E-mini S&P, that same level. NASDAQ, that same level. It was 30. Pretty much those same levels. These prices are those same from that monthly chart. Gold. So for gold, previous week low. And then the midpoint, it is weekly inefficiency. So 1940.7. UJ. So of course, previous week's high. And this is that same level up here. Well, no, this is actually not the same level. This is uh buy side within the pathway to that monthly should be high so this swing high here on the weekly 
GU. So previous week's low, the two previous week's low, this swing low here. And then anything below that, be looking forward to reach down into this weekly inefficiency here. And then uh, on the daily, you know, I can bring up the hourly as well. So just a little quick brief, I'll do the dollar and actually I'll use this. So the daily from the dollar here, it's my anticipation. So above 103.308, this stays bullish, starts heading toward 105.103. I'll be stalking sales in SPX, NAS, US 30, GBP, USD, and maybe gold. But if it fails to act as support, then I'll move back to uncertainty. And I'll continue just targeting the intraday liquidity in New York session on the 15 minute chart. As far as SPX is concerned from last week. So again, it was a shortened week. This is all from here to here, which is all technically like Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, all of this. But, um, it started off, did not reach up into the buy side, left that area, 42.44, relative equal high just below, worked its way down into this daily inefficiency, was able to accumulate inside of there, leaving more relative equals high, more relative equal highs here. This was a trade from Thursday, which was the last live price commentary I did last week. And it was just basically targeting that equal highs here. Overachieved to and through that back to the weekly opening price. Eventually, in the London session, early Friday, worked his way up finally into that buy side liquidity pool. Accumulated above it. This was news here. Manipulated into sell side. Got people chasing that for the sell and destroyed them to end the day running higher into this liquidity void on the weekly chart and so there's still potential to the upside which is what i mostly outlined for the u.s stock indices if you notice for gu and gold though the targets i was anticipating it reaching to were below for the u.s stock indices all of those targets were above and that's just because when these things are making a run towards the the uh, pools of liquidity that are to be introduced into the market, there's no stopping the train. I've learned that the hard way and I've stopped trying to pick tops and bottoms. I'm gonna wait for confirmation and until it shows me confirmation that it's ready to start breaking down lower and attacking higher time frame lows, then I can only go with what's currently happening, which is these are running higher still and there's still the potential for them to reach higher to pair sell orders with willing buyers at higher prices. As people get into this mindset that the bear market is over, it's a bull market again, all-time highs are in the scope, and just me staying objective, I have the range measured out from the all-time highs to the lows that they've created since early 2022. I like where they are within that range. They've all traded up into the premium end of that range. And so any week now, I'm anticipating some sort of a deep retracement from the U.S. stock indices. Again, though, I'm not trying to call the tops. So my goal here is to continue to identify the inefficiencies and areas of liquidity above those marketplaces that they may be reaching towards and then i'll use those to see if i can get some sort of a lower time frame signal for a sell and i'll be sure to always take my partials but to leave runners in case it is somewhere near the top just so that i can have a position at sin at a higher or one of the highest prices available that I can just hold that to continue building equity while I engage still on a daily and weekly basis, still just targeting intraday liquidity, daily and weekly liquidity. And so with that being said, that is about it. Again, 
with me doing the live price examples throughout the week, it's made it a lot easier for me to keep my reviews and outlooks a little bit shorter. I pretty much outlined my narrative as well as the bias that I have for everything. And uh, just one last thing I, I just want to point out as well is so I finally got that consolidation week in a dollar. It was a, a rather large a, like range in the sense that it continued to expand and provide what would be considered fake outs. So where it looked like it was leaving the range and then going to start to trend in one direction, but then it would find support or resistance and then work its way back into the range. And so just looking at from the high to the low of the range that it ultimately created last week, I found it interesting how it rallied right back up to halfway of that range on Friday to end the, to, to end the week. And so that was very interesting to me. Something I've always mentioned, though, is about ranges, identifying ranges, knowing how to pick the right range, and just understanding that equilibrium of ranges You'll see price consolidate, or I've seen price consolidate, but also as far as just having a conservative, easy, low-hanging fruit target, equilibrium of a range is always, in my opinion, going to be a candidate for that. And so, with that being said, shout out to the believers. I'll catch y'all during the week in a live price example. Peace.